We got a loaded show for you today, Houdat Nation. But before we dive into the winners and losers from New Orleans Saints OTAs, I want to encourage you to follow me on Instagram. I recently made a new profile where it's going to be a lot of my Saints coverage. I still have my personal account where I'm posting updates about my day-to-day -day life. However, I have a Saints-specific Instagram where I'm posting short-form content, highlights from games, clips from our videos, memes, all sorts of fun and interactive coverage. So if you want more content in between these videos and you like using Instagram, give me a follow at TraceGerard48 underscore. The link is in the comment section and description of this video. This is my profile, so go give me a follow. Check it out. And if you DM me that you made it from this video, I'll give you a follow back. So we're going to be discussing the winners and losers from New Orleans Saints organized team activities in the first session of organized team activities. Welcome into Saints Now by Chat Sports. My name is Trace Gerard, and we're going to break it all down in this video. So it is worth mentioning really quick. Obviously, it's the very first session of OTA, so don't overreact to me saying one guy's a winner and one guy's a loser. There is still a lot that can happen with these Saints practices. There's still players who can, you know, really make a big impact and earn a roster spot, and there's still guys who can maybe slip and make, you know, be a roster cut, if you will. So let's talk about the first winner in our first session of organized team activities. It's uh, backup quarterback Jake Hayner. He had a really strong start to OTAs, and I think that it's really important that we do not count him out as the QB2 and just go ahead and write off Spencer Rattler as the QB2. I mean, Spencer Rattler at... OTAs. This was, we talked about him very briefly in a video that we put out earlier this week, but let's dive into him a little bit more. He did get work with the second team, so he was with the backups, not the third stringer, so that is worth noting. Dennis Allen and the coaching staff views him as the QB2 right now, and in terms of the overall activities, he went three for four on seven on sevens. He went four for four in 11 on 11 drills, so he went seven for eight in total in team drills. Uh, good footwork and accuracy for Jake Hayner, he was moving around the pocket well. He was fitting the ball into nice, tight windows, giggity. And on top of that, he was making some really, really nice plays. I mean, had a high snap, corralled it in, and then put it on a dot to Chris Olave on a really tight throw. And then on top of that, had a really nice throw to A.T. Perry over the middle where he kind of corralled it in with one hand, brought it in with two before his feet touched the ground. So I think that was the play of the day. And I do want to add this report that Nick Underhill has recently wrote an article over at NewOrleans.Football. Go check it out. It's a really, really nice article. But Jake Hayner, he's been working with John Gruden this offseason. That's basically the synopsis and kind of the here's what you should know. He has been, you know, not only working through how to learn the playbook and how to read schemes and stuff, but also how to develop into a better player. And I know that a lot of people don't have a very good taste in their mouth about John Gruden. A lot of people don't necessarily like the coach. However, we would be lying to ourselves if we didn't at least give him the credit he deserves of being a smart guy in between the ears for football. And he also knows how to develop the hell out of quarterbacks. I mean, y'all remember the show on ESPN, is, you know, QB camp. I mean, I, I was very, very young, but I remember watching that with my dad. So if uh, Hayner's working with John Gruden, it's clearly been working out for him. So I think that that's really important. I think that that's uh, really interesting. And you know, maybe that's why Hayner is off to such a hot start. But let's see how the rest of the offseason pans out because I think it's going to be interesting. And I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel as well because we're going to be going through winners and losers after each session of organized team activities throughout the entire offseason. And on top of that, during the regular season, we give you guys live watch parties, play-by-play, -play, news, rumors, updates all throughout the regular season. Videos pretty much 365 days a year, so go ahead and give us a subscribe today. Lock us in for more Saints videos. And on top of that, you can know what's going on in the offseason. So loser number one, again, he's not a loser. He's just, for the sake of the video, for the sake of the content, he's a loser. Spencer Rattler is a loser because he did actually struggle with OTAs um, in that first session, which was pretty weird to think, considering he started off at, man, or at a rookie minicamp on such a high note. So in terms of OTAs at this last session, he the Spencer Rattler was working with the third team, with the third stringers. And in terms of the overall four or the team activities, four for eight. So it was not good. He was one for four in seven on sevens and three for four in 11 on elevens to go four and eight in total. I mean, you got to be better than that. But I also will say this. He's the QB three. 
He has time to develop and on all sorts of other stuff. But he had slower pace. Not a lot of motion was used. They were trying to keep the offense very simple for uh, Spencer Rattler. And he did have some throws that got away from him that were a little high and, you know, off target and off balance and stuff. So uh, that's just worth noting. And he did throw an interception almost two back to back, which would have been really bad. But he only threw one. Uh, you just can't be having that kind of stuff be a starting quarterback right now or a QB two. And I will also add, like, this is not a hit piece on Spencer Rattler. I've been one of the leading people in the Spencer Rattler hype train. However, I do want to say this. That's okay that he's struggling early. He's a rookie. What do you expect? I mean, do you all remember that video that kind of made its way around social media? I mean, the playbooks are huge. Like, you got to learn a lot of stuff, especially as a quarterback and as a rookie. So don't rush Spencer Rattler's development. Don't just throw him out to the Wolves just because he's a fun, sexy quarterback pick. Like, just take your time, be smart with them, and get, do your due diligence and give do right by Spencer Rattler. That's basically what I'm trying to say here. Don't just rush him into the field and, you know, maybe he fails. Give him the opportunity to succeed. Let him learn. Let him develop. And he's not on any sort of timeline. He was a third-string quarterback picked in the fifth round. Like, there is no timeline for Spencer Rattler to get on the field. So who will be the QB2? I want to know who you think is going to win the battle. You think it's going to be Jake Hayner, the QB that the Saints traded up for from Fresno State last year in the fourth round? Or do you think it's going to be Spencer Rattler, the QB that they went with in round five of the 2024 NFL Draft? Now, winner number two is UDFA tight end Dallin Holker. He's been very involved, and he's been very active in making a lot of plays at OTA so far. And he actually has been getting some run with the first team, which I think is pretty, pretty cool. Now, John Hendricks does a really, really good job covering the team on uh, social media and all on all of his platforms. I mean, he has like three or four different outlets where he's putting stuff out. So definitely go give John some love over at Saints News Network. And uh, he also has a podcast with Ross Jackson as well. So you should definitely check that out. But he said that I mentioned Dallin Holker earlier in this article and his involvement was in, uh, was evident. He made four catches on the day and one or er, and on one particular play during team drills with Jake Hayner at quarterback. He went in motion and off play action. Hayner found him wide open near the sideline for a big gain. The Holker hive is here. Now, I think that Dallin Holker actually has a very realistic chance to make the roster. I think if there were any UDFA to make this 53-man roster, it is going to be Holker. If you remember last year, the Saints actually rolled with four tight ends. They had Juwan Johnson, Foster Morrow, Taysom Hill, and Jimmy Graham. And I could see them rolling with four tight ends again this year because maybe they can... They view Dallin Holker as just kind of an overall weapon, maybe like a Taysom Hill light, Taysom Hill Jr. type player. I'm not saying that that's the skill set he has, but I am saying that he is an offensive weapon that's actually been really impressive so far. And honestly, it's still a mystery how he went undrafted. So I'm excited for Dallin Holker to see what he can do in the black and gold. And I think that he's going to be a really, really fun player to have on this football team. Now we got some more winners and losers to discuss, but I got to give a big time shout out to Chubby Shorts. It's summertime, baby, so you know what it means. Sky's out and the thighs are out too. So Chubby Shorts makes clothes that make every moment feel like a vacation. Some people wear tuxedo t-shirts to show that they like to party, but for me, I rock Chubby Shorts, swim suits, and shirts by the pool, at the bar, or when I'm kicking it back with some homies. So crack open a cold one and make any day feel like a Saturday when you use our code CHAT, that's code C-H-A-T, to get 20% off when you, when you visit chubbyshorts.com. Now, I'm a dude who's got tree trunks for thighs and a really nice dad bod build, and Chubby's is perfect to match my unique fit and style with a variety of high-quality, everyday men's apparel. You can pick from the most comfortable shorts you'll wear all summer to swim trunks, pants, polos, and even button-down shirts that'll have grandma praising how well you clean up and your girlfriend wanting to get down. Now embrace the spirit of endless summer with Chubby's, the ultimate destination for bold, vibrant, and outrageously comfortable clothing. And for a limited time, our viewers at Saints Now by Chat Sports are getting 20% off from Chubby's when you use our exclusive code CHAT. That's code C-H-A-T at chubbyshorts.com. You see the link at the bottom of your screen. I mean, look how fresh I was looking by the pool at the grill, whipping it up. And then you see me, my man Marshall Green, and my homie Mitchell Rents kicking it back 
soaking up some rays and looking fresh in our Chubby's apparel. The link is in, the link and information is in the comment section and description of this video. So go get started, go get geared up, and let the weekend begin with Chubby's shorts. So for the loser number two that I have in this video, I'm going to go with Cedric Wilson because I'm being really nitpicky on this. He was responsible for Derek Carr's only completion on day one. Now, it's worth noting media wasn't really given availability at day two and at day three of OTA. So we really only got to see what happened at day one. And Derek Carr actually looked pretty solid. He looked like a seasoned veteran, as you would expect. And I mean, he was on time. He was accurate. He was punctual. He was keeping the offense moving, which is what you want to see. However, he only had one drop, and it was when Weta, it's when a pass hit Cedric Wilson in the hands, just fell to the dirt. So that's not what you want to see. And why he's a loser is because of that. And I want to add this here. I think that with the current wide receiver group you have in New Orleans, sure, Cedric Wilson is you know likely to make the roster, but I don't want to count out some of these other guys. Like I don't want to count out Mason Tipton or – uh, Jermaine Jackson or Bub Means or Kyle Sheets or hell even, you know, Equinemius St. Brown. I think that he has a role in this team possibly as a blocking wide receiver and possibly as a player who can make a positive impact in more than one facet rather than just receiving the ball. Now, don't sleep on these rookies specifically. I mentioned them off the top of the graphic talking about the wide receiver group. Kyle Sheets, he's six foot four, 220 pounds. He had 76 receptions for almost 1,200 yards and 17 touchdowns at Slippery Rock. He had a 9.44 relative athletic score. He had a 37-inch vertical, and I think that he could possibly fill that void uh, or fill that need of being the X receiver because of that 6'4", 220-pound frame. He's also super athletic. Now, Mason Tipton, he's a little bit smaller at 5'10", 179 pounds, but he did have 20, uh, and he did have 53 receptions for over 800 yards and 10 touchdowns at Yale, and it's worth noting, this kid is fast as hell, 4.33 40-yard dash. That's pretty damn good. Now, Jermaine Jackson, I think that there is a path to him making the roster, especially with the new kickoff rules. We are allowed to have two kick returners deep, and he is one of the few players in college football that had 600-plus kicking and, or kick and punt return yards in his uh, career. He also had four touchdowns in the return game. Three of those were punts. One of those was a kickoff. And on top of that, he also had over 100 receptions, over 1,600 yards, and six touchdowns throughout his receiving career. And Bub Means, he is a really talented player that I actually am thinking is a big-time sleeper. Six foot one, 222 pounds of bigger size profile and more athletic player than Michael Thomas was coming out of college, actually. However, I do understand he's not a Michael Thomas just, you know, copy and paste replacement. But he is dangerous over the middle. He's a player that can be a linear burner, and I think that Bub Means has a very sneaky role coming for him in the future in New Orleans. Now, my third winner is actually going to be offensive coordinator Clint Kubiak because he's been living up to the hype. I mean, he's doing exactly what we as Saints fans were expecting him to do. He's emphasizing high tempo. He's keeping players accountable. He's doing a lot of things to make this offense improve and not be stale and not be boring and not be slow. And that is exactly what we signed up for when we hired Clint Kubiak. Now back to John Hendricks in this write-up. If there's one big takeaway from the day, it was the fact that the Saints offense used a ton of motion and play action. We knew that this was coming, but to see it from the very start and also see it work was a thing of beauty. We saw tight ends, running backs, and fullbacks all in motion in team drills. The zone runs and boots were all a staple for the Clint Kubiak offense, which did not disappoint. And it's really nice to see this. we're getting what we expected. And I think it's actually pretty cool, too. Uh, Gary Kubiak was also present at Saints OTAs, you know, just kind of being another voice, another mind out there. And he's a really smart offensive mind. I mean, the Kubiak system had a, had a, a founder, and it was Gary Kubiak. So I think that's going to be exciting to see this offense with these players, with these weapons, because I think the Saints have a talented team. It's just a matter of honing them in and uh, – and, and catering to their skill set. Now, loser number three, it's going to be Mike Evans, actually, because the Tampa Bay wide receiver, his father, unfortunately, is going to be sticking around in New Orleans, unfortunately for uh, Mike Evans. Dennis Allen had some positive things to say about the future of Marshawn Lattimore and what to expect with him in terms of a possible trade, and here's what Dennis Allen had to say. I know he's working hard. 
I know he's getting himself in the best shape that he can get into. And so, like I said earlier, when he's back, we'll embrace him with open arms and we'll start working on getting better for next year. Now, Marshawn Lattimore was not present at optional OTAs. Like, they're not mandatory. Let me make something very clear. The fact that Marshawn Lattimore is not there is not a problem. He actually hasn't been to the optional portion of OTA since 2020. Um, don't expect to see Marshawn Lattimore until mandatory minicamp. And that's the expectation laid out by the coaches. That's the expectation lay I'm laying out to you, for, you know, from a YouTuber to a person viewing this as a consumer. It's okay that Marshawn Lattimore isn't there. You probably won't see him present until we get to mandatory minicamp. And that is okay. Now, if he doesn't show up, if he starts holding out, if he starts... If, if that's when things kind of, you know, get a little bit crazy, the alarm bells should be sounding then. But until then, man, I'm not worried about it. Marshall Lattimore is a pro's pro, and he's going to be ready for the season. Now it's your turn to let me know who's the biggest winner and who's the biggest loser from the New Orleans Saints OTAs as we have one more player that I want to give a little bit of credit to because I didn't think he was much of a winner. I didn't think he was much of a loser. I just wanted to say honorable mention Willie Gay, the linebacker. He's really adding so much speed and so much athleticism to the linebacker group. And that's something that we haven't necessarily seen over the past few seasons. And I think that replacing Zach Bond with Willie Gay is a massive upgrade. And honestly, I think it's also really funny that the Eagles are, you know, looking to use Zach Bond as an off-ball linebacker. Yeah, uh, your funeral, Philadelphia. But anyway, this is, Willie Gay is bringing something to the defense that's been missing, at least in the uh, linebacker group. So I'm excited to see what he can do this year. Uh, and I think it's going to be a really fun season for Willie Gay and the Saints defense. Uh, now, final reminder, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to the channel if you want more Saints videos all throughout the week. We have videos coming at you every single day, including throughout the three-day weekend. So be sure to tune in every single day throughout this weekend. And I also want to give a special shout-out to John Hendricks, Ross Jackson, Nick Underhill, Mike Triplett, Aaron Summers, Catherine Terrell, and everyone else that's out there at Saints OTAs, providing a lot of coverage and providing a lot of information for some of us that cannot be out there with boots on the ground. So shout out to you guys, and thank y'all so much for all your coverage. And thank you, Saints fans, for watching today's video. Y'all stay golden. See you next time.